You might have missed it among all the 14th Amendment talk this week, but things down in the Mar-a-Lago classified documents case have been very busy. One of the many filings this week was a scathing response from special counsel Jack Smith to a request made by Trump's lawyers for more time for pretrial discovery. Now, if the judge in this case grants Trump's request, it would delay the scheduled May 20th trial even longer than it already seems to be delayed. As special counsel Smith wrote, Trump's objective is plain, to delay the trial as long as possible. And the tactics they deploy are relentless and misleading. They will stop at nothing to stall the adjudication of the charges against them by a fair and impartial jury of citizens. Smith continues, their motive is additionally revealed by the nature of one of the motions that the defendant now suggests that they intend to file, a motion to dismiss based on purported presidential immunity, despite the fact that the criminal conduct charged in the superseding indictment took place entirely after defendant Trump left office. Joining me now is Joyce Vance, former U.S. attorney in the Northern District of Alabama and professor at the University of Alabama School of Law. Joyce, thank you for being here. I, I feel like for a long time, uh, Jack Smith has been quite restrained, at least um, in, in the writing of a lot of these filings. This one, however, really seems to um, reveal a man frustrated. Who do you think is the audience for this particular file? Is it, is it Judge Cannon, or is it maybe the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals? You know, Judge Cannon is the audience for, I think, Jack Smith's increasing outrage this week. It's in this motion. It's in a squabble over potentially releasing the names of witnesses. Federal prosecutors are very measured, and there's always someone to read your motion before you file it. That was my job for a long time as the appellate chief in my office. And something that I did was I made sure that not even a hint of discourtesy crept into our pleadings when we filed them in front of a federal judge. So you know that for this strident of a tone to be used in a variety of motions, it's a deliberate strategical decision. They are uh, putting her on notice, in essence, that she's crossed the line and that they won't tolerate the commission of clear air. I mean, it's not the only filing that the special counsel's office has made this week. He also is suggest or not suggesting, saying plainly that he thinks Judge Cannon made a, quote, clear error in her order to unseal, um, I believe it's redacted discovery documents. Um, the special counsel's office has said, you know, effectively releasing these documents would expose witnesses and it would trigger intimidations and threats against, again, not, not just witnesses, but even Judge Cannon herself. In the course of that, we learn that there is an ongoing separate federal investigation into witness intimidation or threat, threats made against a prospective government witness. So it seems like there's real currency to the argument Jack Smith is making here in his plea to Judge Cannon. And yet, Joyce, do you think this is going to fall on deaf ears? So it's an interesting question, Alex. I mean, we're super nerdy in the weeds here in terms of talking about these sorts of pleadings, about discovery. This is the sort of stuff that doesn't usually happen in a case because most judges are very concerned about the safety of witnesses. And at the first whiff of potential threat to a witness, most judges will take every step necessary to protect those folks. That's not what's happening here. And so Jack Smith has, as you say, uh, accused Judge Cannon of committing clear error. That's the standard he has to allege in this sort of a technical motion for her to reconsider one of her earlier rulings. And he's right. She has committed clear error, requiring him to, to prove stuff that he doesn't have to prove. But the most important thing to know about this is that he is clearly outraged that she would expose witnesses and that she would expose information about an ongoing federal investigation to Donald Trump. She has now ordered him to turn that over. You know, I had not expected things to come to a head in this case until she ruled on the Classified Information Procedures Act hearing she's holding next week. But Jack Smith may be on track to go to the 11th Circuit earlier than that. I, I say maybe cautiously, but it's possible that they would file a motion called a writ of mandamus asking the 11th Circuit to order her to protect these witnesses' identities from disclosure rather than run the risk that they be exposed to harm. Yeah, can, can we just talk about that? Because that is the breaking kind of news this hour, if you will, 
that Judge Cannon is effectively ignoring the special counsel's pleas, the concerns that he's voiced about uh, witnesses under threat or in intimidation, and is saying the court finds an insufficient basis provided to deviate from the sort of traditional adversarial process in this instance, which is to say, these documents need to be shared with Trump's counsel. Sorry, Jack Smith. I mean, does that seem unusual to you? I don't think unusual even begins to capture it. It's really extraordinary. Prosecutors have to be able to protect witnesses, not just in this case, but in every case, because we ask people to come forward to tell the truth so we can hold criminals accountable. And sometimes criminals aren't super nice people. In this case, we've got a defendant who, whether through his fault or through the, um, the implications his followers take from his comments, Witnesses, people who have spoken out against him have been exposed to risk. And in some cases, Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul, comes to mind, exposed to harm because his wife had become one of Trump's political targets. So look, if you're a federal judge, what you're doing here is you're listening to prosecutors, you're carefully evaluating the evidence and the law, and when they come to you saying, this is so serious that we have an ongoing investigation that we need to protect, you don't then turn that over to Donald Trump, the defendant. Well, it seems like there is a case to be made, whether now or in the future, about whether Judge Cannon is the right judge for this case. Um, but that all remains TBD. Joyce Vance, thank you, my friend, as always, for sharing this Friday night with me.